Welcome to WesleyGospel.com. I um, had an experience in prayer that I would like to share. Um, and um, my, my view of prayer is very Catholic, even though I'm a Protestant charismatic. Um, and when I say that, I don't want you to think that I believe in praying the rosary or thinking about the Virgin Mary. No. Uh, but if you get rid of those two things, there are certain things about Catholic teaching on prayer that are very supernatural, very spiritual. And um, I would like to talk about that. There's a book called Divine Contemplation for All by Savinian Luesmit. He was a uh, Catholic monk slash spiritual director. Um, and uh, I was reading chapter 13 and chapter 14 on the subject of what they call mental prayer. Mental prayer is simply getting your body quiet and at rest so that you can lovingly gaze at God the Father, God the Son, Jesus Christ, and God the Holy Spirit, um, and and then maybe just Jesus. A loving gaze of perfect mental concentration on God. And this action, simple as it is, is was understood to be Worshipping God in spirit and in truth, because God is a spirit, and then they, they that worship him must worship in spirit and in truth, John 4.24. So, they say that this is the greatest, most spiritual action that a Christian can do, and the more a Christian does it, the holier they will become, the more spiritual they will become. When I was in high school, I was taught this is what charismatic worship was. I mean, I didn't think twice about it, but little did I know I was being taught contemplation and mental prayer. And um, But mental prayer says, let's get rid of all the music. Let's get rid of the people. And let's just concentrate on God. Just focus on the Lord. And... Um, looking unto Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, Hebrews 12, 2. Being still, be still and know that I am God. So you're sitting there, the objective is concentrating on God, the God of the Bible, the Holy God, that we understand him. So we have to have good theology. This presumes an orthodox orthodox understanding of the Holy Trinity and um and not weird New Age theology in there. So, um, and as you continue to quote, have the body being at rest, the mind seems to be alone concerned in the work of divine contemplation. Page 87. Divine contemplation, what does that mean? God staring. God staring. Staring at God. The mind seems to be alone, concerned in the work of staring at God in your mind. You're just focused on God. You're not thinking of words. You're not thinking of distractions. Totally concentrated. The objective is to get totally relaxed. And concentrated. Now, if you have chronic pain in your body, that's going to be tough. And you might think, well, I'm just not even going to try if I have chronic pain in my body. Listen, I have chronic pain in my body too. There are things you can do. I have high blood pressure. There are things you can do, even with discomfort in your body, to still make this happen. Because the belief is, and I believe it, that the Holy Spirit will come alongside you the more and more you push in and concentrate and finally lock your mind into a supernatural concentration. I know that sounds ex extremely weird to say that. Supernatural concentration on God. 
The Holy Spirit comes, arrests your brain for a little bit so that you have perfect, your mind is stayed on him in perfect peace. And you're just supernaturally concentrated on God. And you might say, well, I don't, I don't feel the Holy Spirit in that. You don't have to. You'll know it's the Holy Spirit because he will completely arrest your mind to be focused and it will not it will be so easy to concentrate once you break through to that concentration so the holy spirit will suspend your your concentration in such a way that you will truly be worshiping god in spirit right so the concentration comes in spirit he comes alongside you whether or not you're sensing him or not is another matter altogether but the issue is that the objective is to get fully concentrated on the Lord. That's that is the objective and you've got to try to make your body as relaxed and pillowy and protected as possible. So I like to protect myself with pillows and comforters and everything I possibly can to get myself as physically relaxed as possible while sitting up so that I can lift up my eyes and focus on the Lord Jesus Christ. And so the objective is this loving attention, this loving gaze, this loving stare towards God in that direction. And as you do this by yourself with your doors shut, Matthew 6.6, 6, if you get lucky, the Holy Spirit will pull you into a heightened state of really, really easily concentrating on the Lord. Now, if this happens, you might get lucky and see a vision, um, an interior vision in your mind's eye with your eyes shut. And you might even hear a voice pop in your head as well from the Holy Spirit. Um, and that was called by St. Teresa of Avila, that, that's called the prayer of quiet. That's that really easy concentration on the Lord. And it's in that state where you almost feel like going to sleep, but not quite. Because you're just focused on the Lord as still as can be. You're like a statue, right? Now your mind is still enough to actually receive something, to listen. And I had an experience like that. I reached it for a little bit. Um, I, I worked on the concentration thing for about 10 minutes. Uh, it was tough because my flesh was impatient and achy. I pushed through, I kept on trying at it, and um, and I got myself an experience, and I wanted to share it. I wanted to share it. Um, I had comfy pillows underneath me, and and a, a comforter around me, I, so I got my, my, my flesh as restful as possible. My mind fully pulled into a concentrated state for about a good minute or two. Just as still, I was like a statue, man. I was like a statue. And I debated with myself after the experience whether or not I had visualized it. And after the experience worn off, I tried visualizing it again and I couldn't. So I don't believe I visualized this. I believe this was a vivid, closed vision. That means my eyes were shut and the Holy Spirit gave me an interior vision in my mind's eye that was clear and lucid enough to be something that happened to me. I experienced it. I saw it. It was not something that I conjured up out of my creative visualizing imagination. It was something that impressed on me like a dream, right? It was it was very clear. And what was the vision? It was a vision of Jesus standing in a robe, and it was so well defined that I could see the, the vertical lines in his robe, and his 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 uh, his hands were reached out uh, towards me, kind of like to, as if to give me a hug, and uh, he was standing up on a rocky platform as if he was going to give. A sermon and I was one of the disciples listening and he said come unto me all ye that labor and are heavy laden and I will give you rest and I heard all of that 
Matthew eleven twenty eight. I heard all of that as a distinct mental voice come into my head. I didn't make it. Praise the Lord. I wanted to share that. Not that I don't share every experience I have. There's a lot that I write down in my journal because it's just for me. But because it said, come unto me all ye, that means not just John Borov. All ye that labor and are heavy laden that listen to this podcast. Jesus will give you rest if you just do what I showed you. God bless you out there. This is John with WesleyGospel.com.